Renault have just released the price of the new Megane E-Tech electric hatchback. It's kind of a crossover hatchback thingy. It's similarly sized to a Toyota Corolla. It's more expensive than a Tesla Model Y. And Renault says they don't see the price of EVs coming down. In fact, they claim there's no evidence to support that theory. The electric Viking is wrong. He's barking up a tree. He's mad. What's that crazy guy thinking? What is he talking about? Well, Renault, you know what? You guys have lost your marbles. This car is priced ridiculously. But hey, let's look at the specs of the Renault Megane E-Tech. Let's consider whether or not maybe it's actually good and I'm missing something. And let's also look at the new Peugeot E2008 electric small crossover, which is coming to rival the BYD Addo 3. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Our merch store is live and open. All sales from that, we get about 10% profit from that stuff. It all goes to my wife's cancer fund to help pay for her $10,000 a week treatments, which sound ridiculously expensive, but um, Actually, there's a lot of clinics that charge a lot more than that, and it does appear to be definitely helping, even though she's only been there for a few weeks. Now, if you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description below. So, the Renault Megane E-Tech price has been revealed for Australia. It's going to be mid $70,000. In other words, around maybe seventy to seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven thousand dollars Australian dollars. You guys in America, that's just low fifty thousand US dollars. What is the specification? Is it worth that kind of money? Well, first of all, the Megane E-Tech is similarly sized in terms of length to the Toyota Corolla. Of course, it's jacked up a little bit. It's a little bit wider, a little bit higher. Overall, yeah, it's a bit bigger vehicle than a Corolla for sure. It certainly looks a lot bigger because of the fact that it's jacked up. It's not a whole lot bigger. In terms of interior space, it'll probably be about 5% bigger than a BYD EA1 or the BYD Dolphin. And it is a little bit smaller than the BYD Addo 3, probably about 5% smaller than an Addo 3. So the price seems high. Now, Renault will launch its McGain E-Tech electric SUV in the fourth quarter of 2023, and it says it'd be priced in the early to mid 70,000s. Renault acknowledged it won't be cheap. And here's what they said. The notion that EVs will get cheaper, I just haven't seen it yet at all said Renault Australia boss. With a price tag in the 70 to 75,000 range, the McGain E-Tech Electric will face down the likes of the base Hyundai Ioniq 5, which costs a similar price, but is a much bigger car, and the Kia EV6, which also costs a similar price, but is a much bigger car. Plus, of course, the Tesla Model Y, which costs the same price, or slightly less, but about the same, and is also a much, much, much bigger car. Two sizes up, in fact. McGain E-Tech Electric was approved for sale by the Australian government recently, and it's going to come with 160 kilowatt of power. It's around 250 horsepower, 300 newton meters of torque. It's got plenty of power. It'll do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.2 seconds. It's got a 60 kilowatt hour lithium ternary battery. So there's really two different types of battery you can get. You know, lithium ion phosphate battery or lithium ternary battery. Lithium ternary batteries have different kinds of chemistries, different you know, cathodes and anodes in it. But basically what it comes down to, they're generally nickel-based chemistry batteries that use manganese and cobalt, usually. And of course, lithium. Lithium ion phosphate batteries don't use, they don't really use that kind of level of manganese, cobalt, nickel. Some of them are now starting to use manganese as a different type of chemistry, but it's kind of a new thing. Lithium ion phosphate use lithium iron and phosphate therefore they're much cheaper those batteries last longer but have a little bit less range so there's only one option the bigger 60 kilowatt hour pack charging speed is 130 kilowatts so obviously slower charging speed than all of its rivals in this price segment and it can tow apparently you can tow 900 kilos with this vehicle which is surprising Unbrake towing is 750 kilos that's around about 1500 pounds for you guys in the united states what does it weigh 1,642 kilos. So for example, a Model Y is around 200 kilos heavier, but of course, like I said, it's a far bigger vehicle. What's the actual size? Well, I'm gonna to to quote the size in metric because, well, in the Australia here, where I'm talking about this car for you guys in Australia, that's what we use. It's 4.2 meters long, 4,200 millimeters, 1,670 
millimeters wide, 1,500 millimeters tall, meaning it's a similar size to a Hyundai Kona Electric and the Cooper Born. The Cooper Born looks much smaller simply because of the fact that it's a lower riding car. It actually makes a lot more sense. If you're gonna get a Cupra or this, if, you, if you're cross shopping the two of them, in my opinion, the Cooper Born makes more sense just because of the way that it's actually shaped and sized. That said, it's heavy. The Cooper Born is extremely heavy. In fact, it's about 15% heavier than this car, which is very surprising. So what is actually the base of this car? Well, it's the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance CMF EV platform that it shares with the Nissan Ariya. It's basically the same car as the Nissan Ariya, pretty much. So the interior is quite nice. You get lots of good standard specifications and features. It's got a 12 inch screen in the middle. It's got a 12 inch screen for the driver. Looks pretty minimalist. I think Renault's done a good job on the interior. Now range, 470 kilometers of range. Will you get that in the real world? Yeah, you probably will. Not too far off it, maybe 460, pretty close to that figure. That's a WLTP number, it's pretty realistic maybe 450, but you're gonna get you know a similar kind of range to what you get in a Tesla Model Y around the same price, which like I said, is a much, much bigger car. So is it good value? Will they sell them at this price? Of course not. Renault is saying he, they don't see the price of EVs coming down. You guys know if you watch this channel, uh, if you follow the industry, that is just ridiculous. I mean, the MG4 is a similar size car to this, MG4. And it's going to be, what, come on, at least $20,000 cheaper, all right? The BYD Addo 3 is, well, around $20,000 cheaper, and it's bigger than this. There just doesn't, there's no logical reason for saying EVs are not going to be cheaper. Just because you can't make them cheaper, Renault, doesn't mean other companies can and will and already are. They already are. I mean, this is the most expensive car in its segment based on its size. Now, I'm not including BMW and Audi and Mercedes here, but based on everyone else, it's the most expensive would I even look twice at this car at this price? No, I wouldn't even think about it. It's ridiculous. Renault Australia, they're having a laugh. This car is priced much cheaper in other countries. This honestly, in my opinion, is disgraceful. Renault Australia, they're just profiteering. They think that Australians are just gonna go, well, we don't have much choice. All right, we'll get this. All right, we'll suck it up. In my opinion, that's not cool. I know I personally think Renault, you know, bad, bad decision here to do this and to make this car so expensive. No one's gonna buy it. There's too many other compelling options, especially by the fourth quarter of this year. There's gonna be a whole bunch of other options. Don't even look twice at this, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Let me know if you agree or you disagree. Now, the other electric car coming this year, which is also from France, is the Peugeot E2008. It's a pretty similar size to this car. Tiny bit bigger, but pretty similar size to this car. Dimensions 4.3 meters long, 1,770 millimeters wide and 1,530 millimeters high. Weight, 1,623 kilos. So both of these cars, similar weight. Peugeot E2008 is slightly lighter, even though it's a bit bigger. The reason being, it has a smaller battery pack. It's a 50 kilowatt hour pack. We don't know the price yet of this car. That's the problem here in comparing these two vehicles. I don't know what it's gonna cost, but I do know that it's coming to Australia. It's coming very soon. It's a similar size to the Nissan Ariya, the Kia Nero EV, and the Volvo XC40 Recharge. It's coming in the third quarter of this year. However, smaller battery pack, 50 kilowatt hour pack, gonna give a, real, a range of around 350 kilometers. WLTP is 372, but I've seen real world range tests, they're getting closer to 300. Let's just go with 350, I think that's actually doable. It also has a lithium ternary pack. It doesn't use a lithium ion phosphate pack. Now, if you're wondering which cars do use lithium ion phosphate batteries, all BYD cars do, all of them. Well, all the ones that will be sold in Australia. There's a couple in, in the China that don't, but most of them do. Lithium ion phosphate, BYD, just think of those as synonymous because BYD are the biggest manufacturer in the world of lithium ion phosphate batteries. And of course, Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y base standard model, they come with lithium ion phosphate batteries as well. Now, there aren't currently any other manufacturers bringing lithium ion phosphate powered EVs to Australia. I recommend you get one of those if you can. Uh, the batteries will last long, you'll get more charges out of them. So that's the advantage there. Are there other EVs coming? There will be. I mean, the BYD seal is coming the BYD EA1 Dolphin, that's coming. That's another option that I would probably prefer over either of these cars personally. There could be an MG4 coming. There is a version of that car that has a lithium ion phosphate battery pack being sold overseas. B 
But there will be a range of other EVs coming from China with lithium ion phosphate batteries. Nothing coming soon from anyone other than Chinese manufacturers or so I think the E2008 looks nice. I quite like the look of it. I like the look of the Renault Megane E-Tech. Both of these cars look great. Both of them will probably be priced fairly expensively compared to their direct competition. And really this whole concept coming from Renault saying that EVs are not coming down in price. Well, it's not supported by fact. Look at the price of the Model Y and the Model 3. If you include inflation, which is the only fair way of looking at a car, I mean, People say the Toyota Corolla, remember when that was like, so whatever price it was back in 1985, actually the Toyota Corolla was way more expensive in 1985 than it is today if you include inflation. So so is pretty much all cars. All cars have become cheaper today compared to what they used to be. So the only fair way to compare a car is to include inflation. If you include the value of inflation, Tesla cars have never ever been cheaper, right? It's the same for a lot of electric cars, in fact, They've never been cheaper. The MG4, right? That will be priced affordably. BYD's EVs, they're, you know, they're not expensive. They're pretty affordable. There'll be new EVs coming from BYD. There's new EVs coming from a variety of Chinese manufacturers. And if Renault chooses to price their EVs too high, they just won't sell them. Unfortunately, I see that as being a story for the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance. The EVs are decent. They're not overly compelling. They're decent and they're too expensive. I don't see how they can compete. I personally think that Alliance is in big trouble and will within the next five years have to have some serious thoughts about what they're gonna do as a company. Will they go bankrupt? Well, I'm gonna tell you what my opinion is on that at Fully Charged Live in Sydney. I will actually try and film that show for you, at least parts of it. Make sure you come to Fully Charged Live. I'll see you there and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.